Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do now, so if you guys look up on screen, instead of the way that we had it set up, and technically you could use these together, uh, what I'm going to now show you is how you would quantize using more. And in our elastic audio uh, steps, we switched step one, samples to ticks. Step two, we chose an elastic audio plugin. In step three, we can either manual or like we did, or we can use quantization. The cool part about using quantization is that you, instead of doing it as a whole, if you want to be a little more picky with it, you could do just specific sections. So realistically, if I wanted to go, let me find a, a drum fill real quick on here. Um, I'll do the snare ones. Uh, oh, hold on. I have a feeling that my interface must have stopped working. Sorry, just lost it a little bit there. Let's see if the playback engine just stopped after a minute. Well, here we go. All right, so here we go with these fills. All right, so if I want to use quantize, what I'm going to first start by doing is making sure I'm, I'm, I'm setting my grid measurements here so I can kind of map out where I want this to start and end. Now, like we talked about before, notice because this drum part is ahead, if I if I start it here, it's not going to catch that first kick. Yeah, so basically what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to go ahead and start off in slip mode. I'm just going to grab right before where it starts. And I just want to grab till it, all these fills end. Uh, there's a bunch of them, and then they go away. Here it goes, right here at this build. So I'm just going to go from here to here. You're going to basically go to event. Just like you normally do to quantize, you're going to go to event, event operations. So the event menu, event operations. Then you're going to go to quantize at the top of the list. And basically what you need to do is make sure that where it says what to quantize, it says elastic audio events. So go ahead and click quantize. You see there's a drop down there. You can quantize audio clips, but it's much easier to use. It, it, it will only function in the appropriate process here with the Elastic Audio if you have Elastic Audio events selected. Then you can tell it what grid value. Now, a lot of times, like I said, the shortest grid value, the better. But if you have fast notes, you want to make sure you include those. So uh, let's see. I'm going to start off with the eighth note, see if this works. Otherwise, we might need to go to 16th. And then, of course, watch what happens. You can see it take place as I quantize it you'll actually see it change. And it throws down the markers. So the, the beautiful part about this is that at any point in time, if we don't like anything that was actually done, we can go ahead and make a change to it. Notice the starting downbeat is 
is wrong. And that's, I think, the biggest thing to make note of is that, unfortunately, it isn't always 100% accurate, and it does require uh, every now and then for you to actually go in and manipulate it manually. So you can see that first, this one's off, but if we get it, check it from here. There's like a flub right here. You can hear it. Notice there's a flam right here you can hear. And what it is, is it sounds like it's the kick and the tom. Oh yeah, see? See where the kick is? Here's the kick downbeat right here. Watch the tom as I go down to the tom. You'll see it in the purple. Yep. It's kind of going flammy. And I can definitely hear it. So what I'm going to do is go to slip. Yep, I'm literally, well, what I'll do is kind of what we did earlier. I'm going to add a marker and I'm going to try to line it up so that it falls where the beat of that kick is. Uh, the only problem is that it took it absorbed a little bit of the kick tone. So I'm going to want to notice because I did it, it sucked up the kick a little bit. So I'm going to try to find a nice between. And actually looking at it, I think I can get away with pulling the kick a little further to the front. Yeah, there we go. So I don't have that flam going on in there anymore. Uh, so while you right the stuff you guys just missed, I just started going over quantizing using Elastic Audio. So basically, the smart way to do the quantization, uh, it's still fast, but it's not like just one click and you're done. Is to to highlight the sections section by section. So what I started with in this one was this bridge breakdown with the drums, and all I did was highlight. I have to be in Elastic Audio still. I have to have a rhythmic plugin applied. So I have to still be in Elastic Audio and have a rhythmic plugin applied. You can quantize audio clips without doing this, but it doesn't do it very accurately. So what uh, what you want to do is then go to event, event operations, go to quantize, and in the quantize operation window, make sure that instead of clip, audio clips selected, you have Elastic Audio events. Now this will be the default uh, in the event that you already changed your parameters to Elastic Audio. So it should already be set up. When now for you since you're already in Elastic Audio. Uh, but again, this doesn't actually get printed or, or stay this way until you deselect your audio plugin uh, or your Elastic Audio plugin. And then it will ask you if you want to conform or commit, or should I say, you want to commit all of the audio changes that you made. So what I'd like for you guys to do is I want you to go through the drums. We're going to very easily start off with the drums. And as soon as we're done with the drums, um, just for the sake of, of uh, kind of quickly getting things tightened up, I would move to the strings because that's your second most, uh, yeah, that's your largest track layer expansion. And you're going to want to do those, mostly you'll want to do those manually. And again, you're kind of trying to preserve the way that it is originally as best you can. So you're not going to, you're not going to quantize everything. You're not going to warp everything. You're just going to look according to the grid and according to what you hear, what's off and what needs to be adjusted. You know, so you can do these section by section. So if I was to do this next section here, uh, the section before, again, all I'm going to do is highlight the range that I want changed, make sure I have the right quantization grid node up, apply it and listen to it. And if you hear anything that's a little off, you're going to want to go ahead and make manual changes. Make sense? Questions so far? All right, I'll come around. Let's make sure you guys uh, are, are. Say it. Yeah, just start from the from the well. The first chorus. Hopefully, they're somewhat close. But yeah, just start start left to right. Go from the front end of the song. Cycle through the drums, phrase by phrase. Just making sure that. And I have these markers are already in. So if you look at the top, uh, the top up there, you'll see that there's markers for the bridge, the chorus one, chorus two, the pre, all that stuff. So you should be able to go section by section 
and just very easily cycle through the quantization. Big thing is, is at the end when you are done, uh, make sure you commit. Now before you commit, duplicate the playlist. You, might, you guys might want to do this now before you forget. Duplicate the drum playlist. Because if you keep a duplicate of the playlist, you'll always have the original to go back to in case you don't like any of the changes that you made, or in case there's an error inside the changes. So again, yeah. Yep. You can you can duplicate it just as it is right now, and, and uh, it'll keep that version. Yep. Yeah. You don't have to make any changes to it. So in order to duplicate this, we did this uh, last week, and we did this again on Monday. Yeah, right here on the group, the playlist select. You do it all as a group. Go to the playlist selector, right, and hit duplicate. It'll duplicate that whole group. And what you can do is is uh, just keep track of the numbers. So if you look at the numbers, you'll know, all right, you know, hey, my, my Kick05 playlist group is the one that I'm going to do the last audio stuff on. That way you always have a running backup. Otherwise, you, 